So I just wanted to bring everybody up to speed. It's been a little bit. Been a million things going on. Um, Howard attended, uh, I think he made two of the county ones, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're working with the county to get the people stuff done up there. Um, so uh, update on the da on the Dazzy Grant. That debacle was in a four to six month review process for Dazzy for the hundred twenty five thousand dollars for the, the splash pad. So we've been waiting since April for this review process. I called and got a hold of Billy Jones' office the other day and talked to um, Scott and Stafford, and that was about two weeks ago. And I wanted to get an update. Well, come to find out that. The paperwork all made it to Elijah Tor's office there down there in Dasney, but it never got forwarded to the review committee. <laughs> so I was about living. And um, anyways, make a long story short, after about three days of bullshit, because uh, Billy Jones, I should say Scott from Billy Jones' office, called me back and he goes, they've been waiting for the town to give them the, the other piece of paper that they need. <laughs> and like since when? They said April. Love it. So he never forwarded it. So I'm, I talked to, don't ask me, I think her name's Meg. And they're saying that that, goes, that should go a lot faster. I want them to move our project to the front of the list because we should have had it. That's why we put it in so early. Well, what paper are they talking all, about? The review. So of uh, that splash bag project, it, it's up for final review before they release the $125,000 check. So um, what I found out over the last two days is that they're going to speed it as long as much as they can. The paper is there. They had it all along. Uh, Elijah had just had it on his desk and it never got forward to the next desk. So it is in the review process. So um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do it or not until spring now, but I was not happy about it. But And then there's a compound of things like this other girl that it was supposed to go to, she had one character off on Liz Tedford's email. So she tried to email her a couple times. So she was like, I don't know, nobody's answered me. I've been emailing and trying to get that. You know what it was? It was a seeker. Remember when we did the seeker? Like, mm -hmm. unbelievable. I think February. So anyways, well, it's, it's a work in the process. <laughs> Old business, I'll finish up my own business before we go down for more. Okay, um, there were quite a few people, I don't know if your daughter was one of them, but uh, that were interested in uh, street lights up at uh, Hilltop Estates. And um, I just got two more people that asked because they said that it's kind of a safety and security issue up there because that's, that the new streets are all dark. So I spent about two and a half hours online looking up all these different street lights because my understanding was um the poles they'll put in like they did for the rec parks and uh the mass the right but uh they wouldn't do the, the the decorative ones so i like i said i spent about two and a half three hours getting all kinds of quotes and all this shit. And then I recontacted Troy and he goes, all right, I'll contact the guys that do it out on the street lights to come to find out on that is that they will do them if they're already up there. So if what's up there, if they already had decorative ones there, oh, okay. then they will continue. Nice echo dog. And from what he's saying, I haven't got it black and white yet. We've been you know, emailing back and forth and, uh, I guess I got it in the email, but um, it looks like they're going to take care of that for us if we want to go forward with that. So, like I said, I've had literally probably five people in the last couple months ask what we could do for them up there. And I e emailed the request today. I'll have to see Matt. He's the one that does the, uh, actually, the, the lights uh, on the streets. And he comes out and sits them. So this is kind of what I was looking at doing. Um, this is my hand on crap. But uh, basically this is Darren back here. And I want to, for Mike, I talked to Mike because they're his roads. Uh, Snyder up at the highway. 
he would like a light here on a pole. He would like like a telephone pole with a mast. That's at the end of Darren where that cul de sac is in the back. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, that's I don't love that very much. So, um, so anyways, uh, I know that two of the residents that oh, are yeah. complaining about how dark it is, that's where they they live. One of them lives right here and yeah. then Mike lives right here. So I don't think they'll have a problem with a light pole, but that way they can see the back and turn the plow around. Mike, when Mike they, who lives there? Um, Tom Recor, Mike Recor, okay. he lives right here. So, and that's like a swale there where the ditch line goes. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking okay. if we keep it back over there so somewhere. So that's 22B over there by your Yeah, this is okay. 22B. Yep. Yep. This is Joyce, yep. and actually it makes a big swoop. So all the decorative lights go all the way around to about here. You know where the, uh, it looks like an alpine ski house. Yeah. You know where the professors from the college lives? I think that stops right there. The only thing I, I talked about with Mike is putting one here, and I was going to put it here, but he'd rather have it over here because he goes, well, we wing over here, we don't have a lot of room. But if a wing over here, we got all that room. So he'd like to put one there to light up that corner back there. And then the street light, uh, excuse me, the intersection, I, I thought we'd put one right here too at, at uh, Sheila and uh, Joyce. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the rest will be the decorative. And I don't know, I got a, I think there's a home here. On, I don't know if it's in a couple of days and I'll lose it quick. There's but, several homes there. Yeah, so we might want to talk about putting a couple of the decoratives there. But it, at least down this area, because right on the corner here, there's one at the beginning of Joyce. And like I told them in the, in the uh, you know, basically here's what I said, uh, install decorative uh, street lights on Hilltop Estate street and uh, intersections, I would think would be a, uh, a must being that, you know, for 911 purposes. Uh, I said, well, we'll meet with NYSEC and let them use their best judgment as to how many of the decorative ones throughout there. They, they know how much light they broadcast and all that stuff. So um, I just want to make sure everybody's good with that before I keep moving forward. But he's going to give me a, a price quote. Well, he goes, the only, the, only, uh, the only thing that would cost us more, let me see here, this is real. He goes, uh, no, that's my email back to him. Uh, hey Kevin, found out some of the info for you. It says for you about those decorative lights uh, you were looking at at Hilltop Estates. Lights we install at no upfront cost unless transformers or overhead secondary is needed. If these items are needed, the charges would be upfront in the engineering. I believe that um, that already they already have all underground utilities, which I know that to be correct. I answered them back on that one. If so, engineering uh, will have to take a look to see how accessible it will be to tap off also some other costs might be associated for example if we uh have to bore under under the road um to the opposite side to run power for a light uh in short good news lights are free even if decorative but won't know whole picture until request form is submitted and we can uh, get eyes on it so i i did the submittal um well excuse me this is the one for that one, that was the other one I did. So we did the submittal, I'll meet with Matt, he's in charge of the lighting on the side of the street and I'll get with him. Uh, when I answered him back, I said, awesome news, thanks friend uh, for checking on, into this project for me. He asked electrical services underground in this development. We, uh, or I will fill out the request as best I can because I don't have, this one's like for poles and masts and heights of the poles and how long lengths of the mast. I don't have the decorative stuff. So I said, I'll fill it out to the best I can and try to send it in Monday morning, which I did um, this afternoon, about noon time. Um, I'll get a rough map, which I was going to send him that because he wanted a map of what we were talking about. And then I said, I'll get with Matt, like I said, to, to figure out where we're going to put it. But I wrote in there that the, the intersections will be a must to light up the street signs for 9, 911 emergency purposes. That is a major, major reason why we need to get the safety and security for the bolt up there. So that's basically that project. If everybody's good with that. And I will keep you updated as to what we have. As far as uh, boring across the road, we shouldn't have to because everything they did on Joyce, they kept on the power side. 
and they just ran them that side of the street. So I, I don't think it'll be a big issue. The only one that could be an issue is that one on that dog leg back there because I think the power runs on this side. So if we got to push it over there to get it over there, it might cost us, I don't know. Or we can think about like moving it back a little bit and seeing what we can do. But I'll know more once I meet with the, the, uh, the foreman. All right. But that was good to know, like I said, that they, they would do it as long as they had, you know. But I wasted about four hours doing that other shit. And those lights, they, they sh until you get above seven foot with the decorative ones, they're pretty reasonable. You can pick them up on sale online. There's three different, I had like five quotes there. They're like 300 and something to 600 and something at the upper end. But as soon as you go to like a 14 foot pole, then it's like the minimum is uh, just for a single pole is like 1500 bucks and then they go up to like five and six grand <laughs> you get the multiple you know mm -hmm. so. yeah. okay so this i talked to um our assessor today about and i asked gary about it what this just came down from the governor's office and basically uh they they've passed two more bills into law uh the bill is s.3085 a backslash a point three nine five six eight and it says uh now allows municipalities to increase the maximum income eligibility for new york's real property tax exemption up to fifty thousand dollars for people of age 65 or older or with disability so if you remember last year we increased that i think to twenty four thousand for the exemption um i was thinking i wanted gary to give me the, the printouts of what our our uh, assessed values were it looks like we're still going to be in the plus because of the the uh, new businesses that came into the town and uh, the housing market so it looks like we were we could probably go to after discussing it with him uh, we could probably move that exemption up to about 32,000 this year and that would help out a lot of people that 32,000 still poverty as far as I'm concerned you know what I mean? so that's something I want you guys to think about because uh, we have to start working on our budget for next year and we would have to make sure that we had that in the budget because we would lose revenue off of the assessed values by doing that. But there's not, I think there's only three or four that are disabled in the town, so that's not a big deal, but we do have a lot of um, people that are 65, you know, like, um, like I said, it'd be, uh, I was thinking like 32, but it's a, a number one. They're giving me the eyeball at 65 and over. <laughs> yeah, are you? Yes. Well, see, when I get there, I'm going to drop my Social Security at 62, I'll tell you that. When I get 65, that'll be a miracle. What was it moved up to? 24.5, wasn't it? Last year. I think it might have been 24.5, but I thought it was 24 even or somewhere around there. We moved it from 16 or 18 yeah. up to 24. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the towns, I shouldn't say a lot of them, we were in the middle going there, mm -hmm. but we were low before that because we had to move that a while. So it's something that I want to keep an eye on. So it was nice when I got that email from the governor's office saying that, uh, I mean, we could do it up to 50. We can't go over 50. Um, I think it's easier to adjust the budget annually if we do it in $10,000 increments or so a year. You know what I mean? So we could probably go to like 34000 You know what I mean? I mean, look at next year's revenues projection. As long as we still keep getting the housing built and like, you know, the new store helped up there, the dollar store and Ryan's Mason Air store, that's all revenue that's coming in that we didn't have before. So it, it helps the assess values and what we're getting off the assess values, I should say. But uh, it, the assess values went up down too because of the housing market. It's, they're just starting to come down. I'm waiting to see where they level off. Because like I told, remember I told you guys that this is a year we're going to have to look at probably a reassessment for next year because it's, it'll be going on three years that we haven't did it. Um, you remember the nasty gram I got from uh, Kimberly Davis, the nasty email I got saying I did it. And, uh, 
Gary's good. He goes, I'll do whatever the board wants. He goes, I'll take the heat on that. But she, she threw it back on me and I threw it back on her after because after we did the numbers, the, the numbers were fuzzy math for her. Yeah, it does increase what their um, exemption is. But if we did a reassessment and the house would have went up $150,000, the, the, the extra assess or the extra exemption would have cost them money by just leaving it where it was. But uh, we'll probably do for next year. I don't want to go too far out. I wanted it to equalize a little bit. And the housing market is just starting to equalize. As a matter of fact, Gary said this is the first, first time that he hasn't had a new house or a house sold this month. He goes, in, we've been crazy trying to keep up with it because the market is so crazy. Uh, so everything's slowing down because nobody wants to build right now because the, the interest rates are on the increase. Plus the cost of goods. And the cost of goods, if you can get them. If you can get them. So that's the other, that's one of the two things there. The other one is, um, and this might not be a bad thing too. Um, I'm not quite sure how you guys will think about it. The second bill, you want the number on that one too? The second bill yeah. to look it up. Um, so the second bill extends the option of local municipalities to provide a property tax exemption for first-time home buyers, purchasers, uh, newly constructed homes through 2028. So you're looking at the next five years. The, the what the option would be, it would expire at the end of that year. So basically, they would not pay land tax. Um, up until 2028, which in the long run, you're going to get the revenue if you get and entice people to build in the town. So you're deferring it, much like the state of New York did when they used to do their, you know, invest in New York and then uh, they, they, a business wouldn't have to pay taxes for five years. As long as you can get them to stay there. And, and you know what I'm saying, but so most people that do. build a home are going to live in it for some time. It's not like mm -hmm. a business where there was an issue with that where you were getting a lot of Canadian uh, businesses coming in and they stay for the five year exemption and then going into that fifth year they pack up lock, right. stock and barrel and then they never paid a dime back of what they got. Um, this in other words I think works on that same principle. Um, it helps the, the new couple starting out today to, in their family to get and make ends meet. Um, it would only be on new or purchase homes. Would it be for residential and or commercial? No, this is for residential it says. So, um, it says first time home buyers, so that's residential. But it may be a good option for us. I want to look and talk to Mary and see how we're I know we're doing all right with budget, don't get me wrong. I want to see what that surplus is. And I want to see if we could actually do this and not harm ourselves. Is this anybody forward. else done this locally? There, there, there's, it it's open for everybody, so I would have to check. To be honest with you, Mike, I could check and see how many towns and how it worked out for them, which is a good idea, just to see how they, they made out with it. Um, I just got that. Like I said, about 12.30 this afternoon, I was talking to Gary. So I haven't had much time to research it, but it it does look like, if we can get somebody to build and put in a 35 home subdevelopment, it, saying that, hey, the town of Scott Falls isn't gonna charge their land taxes, they still have to pay the county, you know what I mean? I think the, the county and the state pretty much on the exemption part do the up to the 50, you know what I mean? They usually move theirs up to the <coughs> highest amount. Um, but on this end, I, I, I'm going to have to check with Kimberly Davis and see how that works on there. I had a call Saturday, I think Reggie did it too, at some point, with a local contractor that wants to talk about doing some of this kind of stuff to promote growth. Yep. And I don't, you know, he called me Saturday and I was at the racetrack and I really didn't get. I told him I'd get with him this week, and, uh, and I will, I'll we'll get back to you, but it is sort of something along the same lines. Do you remember what yeah, it was? Yeah, it was sort of parallel to this, and he wanted to put five duplexes in, and he's got a real good experience 
with the town and uh, of course the duplexes would then be rented out and the cost of development was so high in terms of the paving and infrastructure because there's no public water where he wants to do the project and uh, he was you know he'd like to move forward with it and if this program could be applied to him I don't think it would apply to him maybe not no. because of their duplexes and it's not yeah. it's not their first time home buyer yeah, right, um, right. this Understand. would be if somebody was yeah. uh, building a home the way I, I'm reading this but I could check into that yeah um, <clears throat> but no um, there's a couple even the gentleman I won't mention his name but uh, you know they talked to me at the last water meeting and he was like if I get water there I can get a re realtor to or uh, yeah a construction outfit to come in and, and are dying to, re to develop that land and uh, yeah. that's stuff that we have to look at moving forward with even the water yeah. everything is going to boil down to what facilities you have mm -hmm. to entice people to come and and the more people that go onto the municipality systems the eat the better the prices for everybody because it's divided naturally but amongst more people so I'd like to look at blacktop again someday. Huh? I'd like to look at blacktop again someday. Remember when we used to do the roads? Mm -hmm. Just look at it. I don't know if it's even feasible or not, but that certainly helped with developers. Oh, you mean, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Not just keeping our own roads up, but uh, helping with the... Yeah, basically the way it reads right now is uh, they have to bring it up to spec. They have to ditch it to spec. They have to compact it to spec, and they have to pave it, and then it, it is dependent upon uh, the highway superintendent and the town board to then take possession of the road and maintain it thereafter. And that's the way most of the towns are now because it's so expensive to pay. Um, we used to make them do all that right up until paving. And once they had it compacted and grade, graded and the dishing in, the spec then we used to pave it. That's something that we could look at um, to spur some development because like I was talking to Mike Cashman the other day, I was like, we're five minutes from the town plaza, or even Mike Zerlo, when I was talking to him about it, I said, there is no reason why this town should not be progressing better than it is right now. And, you know, probably 60 or 65% of the people work around the town plaza. So, I mean, we don't wanna, we have a lot of area for residential building, we don't have a lot of slated area for commercial, but we don't really need it if we can move the town forward with the, the parks and everything else that's going on to get people to want to invest money and live in your town. And some of that is like the ZBA board and planning board making sure that we get them through that process in an orderly and quickly time. Because that was, most of the time, you looked at the jail too. You know, most of the contractors that worked on the side, they're like, we don't even try to build in town Scott Falls because we're six, eight months, a year before we can even start working on anything mm -hmm. because it's just ridiculous to get a project approved. So what you want to do is be project friendly to those you know, developers that are looking to spend money in their town. Uh, unfortunately, up here, that didn't go through with uh, uh, Buckley Estates because they had that that one homeowner was dead set against duplexes and quads. They want to put quads up there and, and triplexes up because uh, the developer that was doing that actually said when he talked to his Dean County, he goes, the, the price of materials are so much right now that if you build a single family home, you're not going to make anything. Better. You're better off to do the build the same home in a duplex or a a little mm -hmm. bit bigger in a quad or a triplex and then get the revenue from four people to pay for what you're going to have to mm -hmm. for materials and costs and labor to that so but anyways if you're interested in that i'll, I'll even call the real prop officer real property office and see you know what they have to say and see if there's any other towns that are working on that but i thought it might be a very good opportunity for this town to spur some development you know? So if you're good with that, I'll do that, yes. Mm -hmm. So would you stop down and see him? Oh, uh, the, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, get with uh, Vic. 
that way he can talk to the planning board and see. I can, yeah, I'm going to meet with him first to see exactly what everything was because I don't remember. It. Right. But then I'll get with the board if I have to. But I'll let you guys know. Are you thinking uh, like the right around 32, 34,000 on the exemption that makes sense to you guys? Or you want to no. think it over until we go into a budget here? Yeah, I'd like to think it over. Okay. Even, even like to think and I'll get, I'll get some. Uh, I'll get some information on what towns are doing what. I'll have Garrett pull it right off. He can pull that right off of the computer for Yeah, I worry about, I always just look at the devil's advocate too, and the people that are paying taxes and don't get that right. Right. You know what I mean? Right, but it's but specifically it geared towards those 65 or older people in the- uh, 70. The 70, yeah. Uh, not quite. But anyways, um, and, and the people with disabilities. So anyways, um, I'll check into that and see what I can't find out. So, I've had a couple of meetings with, um, and this is like written on a napkin, all right? I've had a couple of meetings down at uh, the, the city mayor's office with the county, um, Mike Cashman, Mike Zerlo, um, they're looking to see what the feasibility would be of putting a sewer line all the way through, all the way up here into Casellas. So, the one drawback with that, other than cost, is that if a water line goes by your house, my understanding is you do not have to hook into it. But if a sewer line goes by your house, you're mandated to hook into it. Are you? New York State. And I believe it's a combination of New York State DEC and New York State Health Department. So, um, it's a couple of informal meetings. I hesitate to even bring it up because it's that, you're looking at a three year, four year project to even get this thing funded to get it off the ground. Uh, but I did want you guys to be aware that I am in uh, communication with everybody down there and we are looking at the feasibility of it. Um, tried to talk Mike into doing something like that, Mike Cashman, when I first got in in 2020. And my major concern as a supervisor is the hamlet here. Because the, the properties are pretty much posted size stamp, so they're running out of room to expand their septics. Already, they, they wouldn't be able to, by the new standards, put a new septic in. Uh, even the algin system that I put in for the apartment house over there, they've changed the guidance and the guidelines and how much each, you know. So, uh, and I got a lot more room than some of the, the lots in town. So, the, the reason I'm at the table and agreed to call was because of that. Uh, the one thing would be um, we would have to spur the infrastructure off of it whenever we decided to move it into the hamlet. Because this line would go right from the city, um, Sanitary, all the way up to Casella's. Casella is interested in it. Um, naturally, that's why they're looking at it. They like the private partnership with the, the municipalities for grants now. Um, there's a ton of money being thrown around for infrastructure right now, so they feel at this time that it's ripe to try to get this project moving and get it funded and get it going forward. Um, I don't think anybody's ready to throw out millions of dollars on it yet. Um, well, they pretty much want to see what the funding is going to be for. It behooves the county because they're doing so much infrastructure over at the old county airport. Uh, behooves the town because they could connect in where their existing lines are and upgrade a couple of theirs. And the city is in need of some big upgrades to their sewer lines with a couple uh, pumps actually. So it's uh, an ongoing process and it might be ongoing for the next you know, couple, three years, maybe even four before we get everything going. But you know, you know, the journey starts with the, the first step. So that's where we're at. The biggest thing is 
that this is multi multi you know municipality with private partner. So this could really get the ears of the um, people that give the grants out. And that could be a, a good win. Uh, my, like I said, my only concern is I'd like to know where the, the village sits, you know, as we get a little closer into this. Uh, maybe by next year I'm hoping that we'll have a, a formulated plan and have something that is uh, preliminary engineering on how it would go and then try to throw some feelers out to see whether the people are interested. Whether they're interested or not, they're going to need it, but you get them to buy it. So you're saying go right through here. Where, you, where do they want to go? Yeah, they're going right down 22B. Okay. And then I'm going to guess that we go up to Sand Road and then right to the south. Is there any chance of tying anything else in the project? Well, we could. The, the thing is that it'd be a multi-agency, so we all got our stakes in the game. And um, I think Howard could tell you after what we'll be going through, uh, mm -hmm. we're playing a little hardball with them. But uh, like I said, it, it, we all have something a little bit to to gain on it or nobody would be at that table that didn't right. have something to gain by it. Mm -hmm. But my best interest at this point in time as a supervisor is what, how it affects the town and what it does to the town. So that, you know, they can have their interest, but it's got to suit our interest or it's not worth doing. Right. Um, but they want as many municipalities as they can that are have a stake in the game to be at the table. And I think it would be crazy not to be at the table. And, uh, like I said, we've had two of those so far. Um, I'll keep you updated on that, but that that, one, that was like, I never would have thought. Would, would it be feasible to check into if Casella and the city and town and us put that sewer line through, that it remains as a, I don't want to say a private, but at, under Casella control, so it would not become a municipal I sewer line? It's a good question, Howard, but I think that if we go in it the way that they're talking about doing it, and I know after talking to Mike Zerlo that if this is going to cost the county, you know, $5 million, then it's going to yep. put the brakes on everything. Because they don't feel it's it's needed at this time, but it's it's a good opportunity to try to get, in other words, the numbers got to add up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If we get the grant funding for it that they believe they're going to get, um, then it's good for everybody. Um, is it a necessity for the county right now? No, but it's it may be in the next three to five years due to the amount of um, building that's going on on the old county airport right. to sustain the sewer. Nobody's gonna. That's our problem here. Is you're not gonna get a business like the town of Plattsburgh does that's gonna put in a fifty million dollar plant, you know, or bigger like Nova Boss or you know those Swarovski and those unless you got water and sewer so this in order to get that you need the trunk line you need the main line to where it's got to go and this is a very good opportunity for the town of Scott Falls like I said to take care of a, a local issue that they're facing now um, they definitely will be having issues with it within the next 10 to 15 years because DC and the Health and Board of Health are only getting more stringent on you know the sewer systems, and it's going to be hard for them to comply or make compliance with that without spending a ton of money. I mean, there's ways around it. You know, you put raised beds in and multi pump stations and not yeah, really, yeah. but you're going to run into some big money. Sounds good. So, I'm gonna keep working with them. Uh, issue, issue. I got this uh, two days ago from uh, the county, and I already talked to uh, Glenn Cutter. Um, I found out he's retiring too, next April. I'm not looking forward to that, because he's been a huge resource to me. Um, they had a property down there on Ladue Street that put in, um, a little garden um, building and um, like three raised beds. They keep, as you can see in the in the photo, they keep all the property mold, manicured, weed wiped, the whole thing. So first of all, after I, I talked to them and 
said, you know, I'm working on multi-million dollar projects and you're, you got me looking at a raised flower bed right now. But, <laughs> you know, I said, well, not to be smart, but I mean, like, how big of an issue is this? So basically this goes back to the FEMA buyout. Because that, that was, those properties down there were bought out by mm -hmm. FEMA. We now own deeds. The deeds had to go from the, the, the FEMA to the state, the state to the county, and the county to us to do what we had to do with that park to, to put that in down there. Um, the county, every three years, has to do an assessment to make sure that no structures are being built up. So this building is probably uh, five foot by, let me go down and measure it, but just guessing, uh, I'd say it'd be maybe five by six, maybe five by seven. So it didn't require a building permit because it's not over 10 by 10. Um, like I said, they, they maintain and mow that whole property, it's, otherwise it'd be a mess. Um, I sent Bill account down there to talk to him. I had him copies of all the paperwork from the county and tried to get them to explain, or he tried to explain to them why this is happening right now. So basically that's the only one down there that he felt that we had or should do something about. He goes, at the county level, he goes, yeah, he goes, I gotta tell you, that's what I gotta do, but he goes, it's, uh, it's gonna be the state and the feds that are probably gonna have a fit if they see anything about them. So, we're, I had, uh, like I said, Bill go down there. Um, he wants uh, the light and the uh, LIDAR and the mapping so that we can pinpoint the lines where they are right now. And Glenn's gonna do that for me. And then he'll measure from where those lateral lines are and see it, how much they're encroaching on that property, if they're encroaching on um, He was, like, it's towards the end of the season right now, so let them grow their vegetables and harvest them. And then um, next year, as long as it's not there next year, if they, if they can move those raised beds back on their property. Like I said, I don't, I don't want to go to war with these people because they're maintaining town property for mm -hmm. us for nothing. You know what I mean? Otherwise, it'd be another several lots down there. We, we'd be more. But uh, I understood. And uh, we were kind of laughing about it after that. Like I said, that uh, I was bitching them out. They were bugging me about three race power cards. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I just wanted to bring up the speed on that. Uh, the other thing that they looked at down there was uh, something to do with electrical lines through NYSEC. So we're gonna uh, be an ongoing, I'll catch you up as soon as I know what the hell's going on. But uh, NYSEC was looking at the electrical lines down there and they want to do an upgrade to the power. So um, that one's not a bad one. It's just they, they need to know, I think right away is for our properties that we own down there that we're all set for them to put the lines in. But I'll keep you guys up there. Uh, up the snuff as that moves forward. But anyways, that was uh, that was the big issue from the county. Is that they had uh, a garden and that one then garden house or shed or whatever you want to call it. Um, going back to the yeah. Ludu Street quick. <coughs> I know a few years ago there was talk of what if the town made that into a community, what do they call it, community garden, mm -hmm. where people who don't have room at their home come yeah. in and put raised beds in there and maintain a garden there? You what do that? everything but the last statement you said. They don't want anything, and that's what I, I, I argued no with them on the phone, is I said they're growing vegetables, they're not building a 30 by 30 garage, you know. Uh, he goes, the way that it's written by um, FEMA is that there is no man-made structures, period. So that's considered a man-made structure. So he goes, if you were to tell those people that, and, and they wanted to plow up a 30 by 40 gra uh, garden and, and work it, no problems, because you're not building it. But as soon as you put timbers together, you're building a man made structure. Now, on the back side of that, okay? Um, now, on the back side of that, let me piggyback off of you because you just reminded me of something. Um, 
you would mention the um, fact that we kind of should have some more permanent bathrooms down at the park at Liberty Street, mm -hmm. Liberty Street Park. So, well, I had him on the phone. I asked him about that too. Um, Is this it right here? Nope, that's the stair thing. Just one cut of stair. My memory, I had something typed up. I didn't get quickly stuck to something else. I did, I get stuck to this one. I didn't know what I do some days. So I'm glad you mentioned that because it would have hung right by. So this is preliminary, very preliminary. But, uh, well, this is the cell at this point. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll do it from memory. But anyways, um, all right. So basically, I talked to him about the bathroom issue down there, and whether or not the town would be allowable to to put a structure. And after I got off the phone, or after I started talking to him about this raised flower garden, I was or uh, vegetable garden, I was like, they'll probably never happen, right? And he goes, no. He goes, you're you're actually on the right track. He said um, that there's a lot of talk and they're trying to pass a bill right now to the state level, uh, but there's also a bill on the federal level to allow for municipalities to build a, like you say, recoup some of the, ex not recoup the expenses, but some of the use of the land that they're paying for. Because right now those properties are on the tax roll we still hold the state and the county their tax on them, even if we can't use them or do anything with them. So it'd be ridiculous to have them. That's why they're so easy to give it to us. So um, there are communities that are revitalizing those properties so that they could be used for, like you're saying, walking paths or you know, community gardens or whatever you want. Like. So um, along that line, he goes, you may have a might be in, you know going down that road at the right time again to, to try to get a bathroom down there. Um, I asked if he would make the phone calls, uh, Glenn Cutter, uh, to see what um, the core engineers in the state thought about us putting a bathroom down there, how big it would be. Uh, he goes, the least that you, or the, uh, least the most restrictive would be, he goes, they might put, make you put a, what they're doing are a lot of state parks, putting a chemical bathroom there. I'd rather not go that that route, but uh, you know, you are, would be allowed to put a permanent structure in, but it'd be a chemical toilet base, and it'd have to be pumped every so often, just like the portable. Um, we keep a, a portable toilet down there all year long. Um, about three, don't quote me, maybe three hundred and something dollars every quarter, um, which is never going to go away as long as we're utilizing that as a summer park and utilizing it for the ice skating rink in the winter and snowshoeing and cross-country skiing, which we're looking to ex mm -hmm. then extend those trails down there and make them bigger. Um, so to me, it would make sense that we would look for a permanent solution for that rather than renting board potties for the next 50 years, right? So he's looking into the feasibility of putting a bathroom down there. I would kind of like to um, piggyback off of Howard's thinking and say that I would even like a couple benches in the front, make the bathroom big enough to put a couple benches in the front so that they want to put their skates on in there and switch from their boots to their skates or their, boots or their skates to the boots at the end or whatever, give them a place to warm up 
you know, heat up. The other thing I'd like to do is also uh, the uh, fireplace is a, a big hit down there for the uh, music in the park. Um, there were like 240 something bucks, so I wanted to get another one for the winter time over in that closer to the ice skating rink over on the other side. I'll figure that out with Sam where he wants that over there. Um, so if you guys are good with that, I'm probably going to move forward with that before fall. You know, we got a couple months, but um, the, the, the accessibility of getting a summer fire pit is harder as you get into the, the winter. So I'd, I'd like to get uh, that same fireplace on a pallet, they call it, and set one of those up over there before we can't get the thing until next spring again, you know, because it's more a summer thing that they carry in the summer. Now how does this work for, like, insurance with someone getting... Uh, liabilities are you know, always there where New York State is a zero deferred liability state. Uh, knock on wood, we've been pretty lucky. Um, it was the same concerns that we brought up um, with the pump tracks and you know road rash and someone mm -hmm. breaks a leg or whatever. How's the, how's the pump track? Going? Good. Still being used. Matter of fact, when I just went by there now, there was three cars back there. They had a soccer game going on and. That a lot, a lot of that use gets dual use because well, one of the siblings is playing in the soccer game or the baseball game, and the other one is, you know, riding the, the pump tracks. So. Um, but anyways, I don't know if I answered your whole question mm -hmm. or not. But um, what do you guys think about that? Uh, we got. I think well, for the the ARPA money would be a good time to do it, and even without the ARPA money, we have the cap reserve fund that, uh, or the unallocated reserve fund uh, that we're going to have to start spending and doing capital improvement projects right so uh, I mean I got him preliminary going forward to see where we could put it because he has a LIDAR to, because there's two spots that even after the the, 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 the 1A flood map came out just recently um, that are still high enough that it wouldn't be considered to be part of that and that's probably where they would want us to put that back there. I'm hoping that's somewhere between the football court and uh, you know the uh, gazebo just so it's not it wouldn't make no sense to put it in the back corner of the property just because that's the highest that it actually was more than that. Um, How much do you think it costs? <coughs> I think uh, with, with that it, Depends on if we want to do it or if we want to hire somebody to do it. I mean, to put up, uh, say, even a 16 by 14 building or 20 by 14 or whatever, um, I would recommend at least two bathroom toilets and the, the female, if you could still say that, and then uh, <laughs> uh, a, a toilet and the uh, males, okay? Um, we're not going to need much of a septic tank and nor do you want a big one down there because you want to make sure there's enough solids in it that it doesn't freeze in the winter. Uh, so I think about the smallest cement tank you can get is probably about a thousand gallons. Uh, but I can check and see if they still make the 800s. I know they used to make the steel 800s, 5, five and 800s, but I don't know if you can get those. I know that, I think, I should say I know, but I'm pretty sure that you have to put a cement tank in there if you're not steel. Um, but that's all part of that that thing but I would think we could probably pull that off for maybe 15, 15 grand somewhere around there. Well if we are going to do it there how about doing it on Salmon River Road as well? They have a, as far as I know they have a bathroom facility over there but if they don't I Well they, they have the portable ones. Yeah. Uh, over there thought, Kevin. Maybe it's just for the town employees and that they use that I thought they had a bathroom facility because I thought Danny said he had to go flush out the toilet um, for the winter. The only thing, I was just there today, uh, portable, I believe. There's yeah. a building there, right? Yeah, there's a building there, and I know he has to, that's where the water comes in there, and that in the winter he had to flush, I thought he said he had to flush the toilet out, so it didn't, well, didn't, uh, didn't crack. I'll check into that, though. Okay, sure. If we're going to do one, yep. let's do both. Yep. What do you think? The, the only difference Absolutely. being was that those are only for about four months over there. This part gets used all year long. That's why I was thinking a more permanent, but it doesn't hurt. And if you want to, you know, expand the project and do that, I got no problem. With it. 
have to have buildings. It's only got a building that's got water in it, possibly. Yeah, they, they already have water there. Yeah. So but we just have to make sure that the building would be large enough to accommodate right. uh, handicap too. Mm -hmm. All, both of yeah. them. Both of them, yeah. It, that's your doors and stalls. Right. So you, if you needed a ramp, if it wasn't ground sure. level, when it hit mm -hmm. the sidewalk, you'd have to put a ramp in, yeah. and you'd have to have 36 inch doors for ADA compliance. But, and, and the grab bars. Yep. Well, yeah. At least one of them, one of the stalls yeah. has to have the grab bar. Uh, but yeah. Everybody came over and talks about those grab bars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's being used quite a bit over there with the, the pump part with the part. It is. Yeah. It is. It's being used quite yep. quite often. The only difference, like I said, is that one's used pretty much from April to sure. about October. Sure. And then yeah. this one's being used 20, 20, I shouldn't say 24 or more. Well, I'd like the interest of the yeah. availability is the numbers right. so in comparison. I bet Sandy River has more people than uh, they do. Probably, but it, it's hard to say Apparently, because a right? lot of people just stop in and they'll go down there for lunch, they'll go down there to take a walk. Yeah. You know, it's not a lot of them take a walk during lunch. Yeah. Um, your activities, Sandy River Road will yep. automatically beat it because the soccer games and the baseball games right. that the so town useful sponsors for the youth right. division are, are played there as well as here. And they're not down there. Yeah. Um, Quarter Johns can be nasty yeah. sometimes. Yeah, But everybody that goes down there, every time we have something down there, everybody's like, you hey, know, this was here. This is beautiful down there. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, as the word gets out, and I plan on still doing the uh, Winter Carnival Festival. I'd like to do it two two days this year instead of just one. And I'm going to talk to, uh, I won't throw his name out, but a local guy that everybody kind of knows that uh, does uh, the fireworks pretty reasonable. Uh, so I'm going to talk to him and see if it's on the second day, the opposite day, that we do the uh, sled ride with the horses so that they're not there when we let the fireworks out. Uh, but, uh, that the other thing we're working on too is uh, and I'm getting way off the, the project scope, but uh, our 175th year anniversary of the town is next year, so um, we're in the middle of August. And if we're going to have something in August, it takes about a whole year to plan that parade. So I've been working with uh, Barb and um, Ms. Hockney and a couple other people. Um, I'm going to get a hold of my friends over in the Cable Fire Department, they do a parade every year to get their vendor list and who they use and uh, the little carnival people that come, not the little people, but the little rides for the, the carnival, not the big stuff, but, uh, and see who they use and see what their availability is. Mm -hmm. with that and see if we can get somebody that's available next August before it gets all back up. Yeah. Another position. Yeah. Um, that I would like to do um, maybe get some food vendors. Yeah. yeah. Maybe get some food vendors. There's a couple uh, uh, food trucks that will come right in. One yeah. does like uh, smoked sandwiches and pork pork. In the winter? winter. Huh? In the winter you're talking about or summer? For the uh, field area? Yeah. For That's the, August the, you're talking about. Yeah. For the